Joining me now to discuss CNN political analyst April Ryan and CNN political commentator Paul Begala. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. So, April, let me start with you for obvious reasons. You are from Baltimore. Um, you know. Yes, I am. You know the district. You know it's yes. West Baltimore and more than West Baltimore. So, when you saw the president's tweets, what did you think? What did you feel? Okay, Victor, uh, first of all, thank you for being you and letting your humanity show uh, yesterday. I cried with you. Um, I am a product, a proud product of Baltimore City, born in Sinai Hospital, just blocks from where the Preakness is run. I was born uh, every there too. Year. You were born, yes, more connection, Victor. Yes. Um, you know, I lived in Northeast Baltimore and Northwest Baltimore growing up. Attended school at Morgan State University in Baltimore City. I'm still in Baltimore, in the Baltimore area. I, as a child, uh, used to frequent the area where there was that standoff with police in the community on North and Penn, you know, after the Freddie Gray uh, death. You know, I know Baltimore from the top to the bottom, from the upper income to the low income. Baltimore is a community. It's a community of communities. It's a city that, yes, is made up of survivors. It's pockets of poverty, pockets of wealth, but people. What I don't understand, like Detroit, Baltimore is like Detroit, like Flint, we need help. After Beth Steele left, there was a massive blight in Baltimore. You know, in Detroit, here where we are right now, Detroit is on the upswing, but there's a problem too because these, these auto manufacturers are having problems with the president's tariffs. This is a city that's struggling. Baltimore is a city that's struggling. And if you are a leader, you always remember this, power means service. So, Mr. President, where's your service to a city that's looking to you for help? It's not just about Elijah Cummings. It's not just about the mayor of Baltimore. It's about you as the leader to say, when I look down, I want to pick you up. Instead of laughing and talking about being infested, how dare he? And you know we are people. And that's where I want to pick up, Paul. And, and SOT 2, Soundbite 2 control room. Let's switch the order here. This is what the president said, and he mentioned the city of Baltimore when he accepted the nomination to be president. This is 2016. Let's watch and listen. When I am president, I will work to ensure that all of our kids are treated equally and protected equally. Every action I take, I will ask myself, does this make better for young Americans in Baltimore, in Chicago, in Detroit, in Ferguson, who have really, in every way, folks, the same right to live out their dreams as any other child in America? Paul, what was so striking about the, the tweet, well, one of the things, was that he, it seemed not to find common cause in helping the people of Baltimore. Those are your people. That's your responsibility. As if Maryland is not one of the United States of America and Baltimore is not a city in that state. Well, Victor, first I want to echo what April said about your commentary yesterday. I thought it was just terrific and badly needed. Um, this, this is a president who has a strategy. And the strategy is to divide and conquer. This is an old and discredited strategy. I grew up in rural Texas, small town in Texas. We've seen this all our lives. Uh, demagogues come in and they divide white folks from black folks so that they can rule from above. And, and this is, I think, the, the message, frankly, at the debate that these Democrats should take to the country. I, I, we, we know that what the president said was racist. We know that. That's news from nowhere. I hope they say it, but it's true. But I think what's more interesting is to talk to those folks. You know, I, I spent a lot of time in rural America. I was on a farm yesterday, okay? Rural America has challenges too, Mr. President. That we have, we're dying before our times from opioid abuse. Uh, marriages are falling up, apart. Children are being born out of wedlock. He does not lecture, attack, and denigrate rural America. By the way, neither did Barack Obama, the Democrat who was president before him, right? We're one nation under God. We're one nation by God. And, and for him to divide us this way, it's hateful and it's hurtful, but it is strategic. He is trying to divide those folks so that they don't see that they have common interests in trying to build a better life together. Let me play a little more sound here for you, because just 10 days ago, 
when we were having the conversation about the president's racism, it was in going after four minority congresswomen, and he justified it by saying, well, listen to the way they speak about our country. Here's what the president said uh, earlier this month. When people are speaking so badly, when they call our country garbage, think of that. That's worse than deplorable. When they call our country garbage, I don't care about politics. I don't care if it's good or bad about politics. Many people say it's good. I don't know if it's good or bad. I can tell you this, you can't talk that way about our country. Not when I'm the president. You can't talk that way about our country, not when I'm the president. First, he's misconstruing and misrepresenting what uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Congresswoman, said in the use of the word garbage. But so now his supporters will say, I mean, first it was, you can't talk that way. Now it's, yeah, but look at Baltimore. What are people just going to follow along, and where is the rest of his party? April. The hypocrisy is right there in our face. You can't talk about our country, but Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore is part of this country. Let's go to Francis Scott Key. Let's go to the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say, can you see? This is Baltimore. I'm Baltimore. We're Baltimore. All of us. Because it's Baltimore today, it will be another city tomorrow. We are Baltimore. Hashtag we are Baltimore. But I'm going to say this to you. For him to use the word, and, and I'm, I'm going to, Victor, just bear with me for a minute, to talk about infested, infested. Mr. President, where's your urban renewal plan for Baltimore and cities like Baltimore? Don't talk about it, be about it, okay? This is now the reporter hat's off because this is ridiculous. And then on top of that, you talk about infested. You know, the city that's infested, you're living in a house that's infested with mice. You, Mr. President, are living in a house that's infested with mice, stink bugs, and anything else. So if we want to start talking about infestation, start talking from where you live. What's running across your covers at night? Now, if you really want to get into the history of the word infested, let's talk about the word infested when it was used against our Jewish brothers and sisters during the Holocaust. There are awful references that this president is making, and it needs to stop. This president said last week or two weeks ago when this, all of this squad issue came up that he enjoys this. He's enjoying it at other people's peril. It's not right. Mm. If he's the moral leader and the leader of this nation, it's not right. Yeah, Paul, Paul let me finish up with you here. Um, there's this op-ed that's been co-signed by 149 African-American uh, staffers in the Obama administration um, condemning what they've seen from the president, those, those tweets. I mean, this came out before we heard about, uh, saw the tweets from Baltimore talking about those four uh, minority congresswomen. Congressman Ro Khanna of California said that it's time for President Obama, for Mrs. Obama to come out and start delivering some speeches. Should they? And what about President Bush? I mean, this should not be left as a partisan issue. If we're calling for one president to come out, should President Bush not come out? Should there be some um, rebuttal from, from that level, from the former holders of the, the, that office? Paul, your take. I, I do. I, I, President Obama, Mrs. Obama, they carried so much freight for so very long that I think they have a right to try to stand back. The, President Obama yesterday did retweet a column, highly critical of uh, President Trump, but there is this sort of code they don't want to do that. I do think you make an interesting point about President Bush, but also about the current Republican leaders. They have to call out their own. Okay, if President Obama stands up, he opposed Donald Trump uh, in a campaign, obviously, where he's in a different party. Republican leaders have to stand up. Paul Ryan, the former speaker, he said it plainly when Donald Trump said that Judge Curiel in San Diego couldn't rule in a case because being from Indiana, <laughs> he had some Mexican heritage. He is a Mexican-American and he couldn't rule. Paul Ryan said that's the very definition of a racist state. But how long did that last? What, what, I mean, once, once yeah, the, exactly. the president started you know, his administration um, and they tried to get taxes passed, a lot of that went to the side and then we heard from Paul Ryan again after he's out of office. I mean, where was all right. of that when he could have affected some change? That's right. They are complicit. The, the, the Republican Party, I'm ashamed to say this is a Democrat. My party was the party of racism for most of its history. The Republican Party was founded on equality. It was founded on abolition. It was founded in part by Abraham Lincoln. And for that party today to be silent when a president is, I believe, intentionally trying to divide this he country is. along racial lines, I think that that is a form of complicity, I think.